I'm here to support uh, freedom. The plain packaging uh, policy is not uh, doesn't make any sense really. It doesn't discourage smoking. If you smoke, uh, you will do it anyway. Um, I think the government of the day should be focused on people's uh, concerns. I don't think this is a, um, a huge issue. I don't think it's something the government should be getting involved in right now. As a, uh, a medic, I think that the uh, the current public health moves by the uh, the government in order to it almost seems to manipulate the, uh, the views, the opinions of the, the people of this country against their will. And it seems to be undermining people's own autonomy and ability to make their own choices in this world. If you feel strongly about something, it's good that people take the time to organise these events. And that's why we support it. So this is absolutely stupid, plain packaging. I'm not going to say, oh, that's a really pretty packet. I think I'm going to buy that and start smoking. I'm not that stupid, and I really object to a government thinking I am. Yeah, hi, um, I'm Lee, and I, I'm a libertarian, and I'm truly undecided on the question of plain packaging, I'm afraid. So I'm here to hear a view we don't often hear in the mainstream media. Uh, so basically, I'm not a smoker, and this issue doesn't directly affect me as an individual. Uh, my main concern is that government policy should really be based on an evidence base and I don't think that's clear on this issue. Events like this are important because it shows that there is some sort of opposition to these plain packaging moves. I believe in personal responsibility and um, the ability of the individual to define his or her life choices other than the state imposing that on him or her. If you just look around and see the attendance tonight, it's incredible the kind of support that this kind of meeting is having, so I think it's great. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to welcome you all uh, to the Institute of Directors. It's exactly three years ago that we launched the Hands Off Our Packs campaign at St Stephen's Club in Westminster. And when we started, we thought it was just going to be a, a six-month campaign, because at the time, the government was talking about having a public consultation. Well, they did have a consultation. It was a 16-week consultation. And there was a record response. Over 650,000 people responded to that consultation. The Hoops campaign alone contributed over 265,000 petition responses. And in total, there were over 425,000 people opposed to plain packaging, a two-thirds majority. When the coalition government first announced that it was going to actually consider introducing plain packaging back in 2012, it promised us all that it would deliver evidence-based policy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have the evidence. It's called Australia. And the plain packaging was introduced there, as you probably know, in the 1st of December 2012. And the facts, ladies and gentlemen, show that plain packaging has not reduced the uptake of smoking, nor has it reduced sm smoking rates amongst adults. Fact. According to the Australian Institute for Health and Welfare, youth smoking rates increased 36% in the period 2010 to 2013. Fact. The black market in tobacco is booming in Australia. It's experiencing a 25% increase in illicit trade since the introduction of plain packaging. Please, MPs, stick to the facts. Vote no. Stop the nonsense. Um, my name's John and I'm a smoker. Um, I, I, there are two reasons why plain, why plain packs could mean higher taxes. The first, as Angela said, is the boost in the illicit trade. If the Treasury loses revenue because people buy dodgy fags, then the government will put taxes up elsewhere. The second reason is the potential for a big legal bill if tobacco companies sue the government for breaching intellectual property rights. So my simple message to take away from tonight is that you could end up paying for plain packs whether you're a smoker or not. It's very important to have the facts and the arguments at your fingertips in order to refute what they say. It's also important to ask them questions. You ask them questions. Why are they saying what they say? Why are you in favour of plain packaging? Are you aware, sir, that plain packaging in Australia resulted in an increase in smoking? an increase in bootleg cigarettes, an increase in fake cigarettes? Are you aware that the ability to control who it's sold to, including children, diminished in Australia? Why don't you take this into account? Okay. It is an article of faith these people are involved in, and we should tell them boldly and ask them questions to undermine that. Yeah. I think that personal choice 
individual responsibility and free markets are the basic principles that make a better society for everyone. I thought that's what conservatives were supposed to believe. So you can imagine how I felt when I heard that conservative ministers were advancing this vote on plain packaging. This kind of policy is the realm of nanny statists. People who like telling everyone else what to do. So I urge every conservative MP to prove that they're worth the, the title conservative and vote against plain packaging. I drink, I smoke, and I am 200% healthy. So did Winston Churchill say to teetotaler General Montgomery in World War II, this is a point that two excellent people were able to get to their positions by taking completely different routes in life and completely different approaches. The point here is about individual choice. This is about individual freedom. This is about government meddling where government should not. We must stop the nonsense and we must champion ourselves in individual freedom and freedom of choice. Thank you very much. But plain packaging is a free speech issue. Companies are being denied the right to publish perfectly reasonable, inoffensive material. The names of their products, their logos, the artwork of their designers. And at the same time, those companies are being forced to publish state propaganda about smoking on the front, as well as, guess what, gory images of body parts to frighten and threaten dissenters. The most troubling aspect of the plain uh, packaging thing for me is what it tells us about the authorities' view of us, the public. That paternalistic idea that all some of us need to see is a tempting, well-designed image, certain words and logos, and we'll be enslaved uh, and rush off and puff away on 40 a day. One of the great sort of myths and fallacies um, that's come around over the last few years of agitation, agitation for plain packaging is the idea that it's about tobacco and it's not it's about packaging and it's about commercial freedom and it's about the limits of government action the anti-smoking groups have said that tobacco is a unique product we're only going to do this with tobacco of course we won't be doing it with alcohol or sugar or soda and yet it's been an inconvenient fact for them that while they've been saying that their colleagues and sometimes themselves have been saying that sugar is the new tobacco and the british medical association has been calling for graphic warnings on alcohol and numerous groups have been saying that we need to have a tobacco style advertising ban for alcohol. And smokers are the guinea pigs. Smokers are always the guinea pigs because tobacco is seen as the weakest link in the chain. But you can be quite sure that other groups will be rushing through. My argument would be simply that this kind of um, uh, confiscation of property in the name of propaganda creates a very grey and miserable and morbid world and that is an argument against plain packaging whether it's for tobacco or alcohol or anything else. Look at the issues that are facing our country and the world at the moment. A budget deficit this year of nearly £100 billion. International instability in the Eurozone, in Ukraine, further afield in Syria. With this sort of backdrop, what kind of final act would you expect this government to take? Yep, that's right. The final act of this parliament before the general election, with that background of problems, is probably going to be to regulate the colour schemes that British adults are allowed to look at. <laughs> that is a pretty feeble grasp of priorities. There's a general election coming up, and it's not for me to tell you how to vote, of course. It's not for the Institute of Economic Affairs to tell you how to vote. But I think it is important that we hold our government and our politicians to account. So keep fighting for freedom every single day, every inch of the way. And I'll leave you with John F. Kennedy's key insightful proverb. Always forgive your enemies, but never forget their faces. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Anyway, I just want to finish off tonight by thanking our co-host tonight, Parliament Street and Liberal Vision, who co-hosted this event. 
but especially to everybody who's come tonight. I know plain packaging on the outside appears to be a rather dry subject, but I hope having listened to all the speakers tonight, you'll realise it's not a dry issue at all. Actually, it's a, a very important one. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please thank our wonderful speakers tonight? It's good to come with a group of like-minded individuals who are opposed to this, who can spread the message uh, and hopefully have some sort of campaign uh, put together. I mean, we were promised evidence-based uh, policy-making by David Cameron, and then a few months later this happens. So uh, I'm not too sure how serious that claim was. As long as it doesn't impinge on other people's rights, I think that uh, you know the law should really stop at that point. I mean, I think that there are a lot of people who uh, really don't think the issue is through very carefully. Um, and unfortunately, those people don't attend events like this. Yeah. It, it really rings bells with the way this country is going. It, it, should the citizen justify themselves and their existence to the state, or should the state justify itself and its existence to the citizen? So these kind of things that are largely condescending, I, I find them immensely patronizing. And as I say, I'm, I'm here open-minded. I'm trying not to bring politics into it too much and hoping I can learn a little bit of, as I say, willing to be enlightened. Plate packaging, um, you know, it's, it's a very drastic policy um, and it, it's really important because, you know, the government hasn't considered less restrictive alternatives. Um, it takes away tobacco companies' trademarks, their intellectual property, um, and that, that's basically the, the theft of property and, and that's really a fundamental right that we need to protect in the UK. This legislation appears to be going through. Will it affect your vote, do you think? Absolutely it would. Absolutely, yeah. Thank <laughs> you.